Welcome to MK Tech. I'll be showing you how you can make a multi-purpose inverter with an output capability of adjustable voltage from any from you can obtain any output output you desire. It's based on the TL494 or KA7500 PWM IC. It has an option for output voltage regulation and adjustment as well as current limiting. So for the IC, the frequency is determined by the these parameters here, the capacitor here, one and farad, and this resistor network. So the variable resistance shows that you can change your output frequency from 45 to 145 kilohertz. The output voltage is controlled by this feedback section. So pin 14 generates 5 volts. And so with 5 volts here, and if you adjust the this potentiometer here, it will adjust the output duty cycle of PWM, which will relate to a variable output footage. So, 12 is the positive power supply, 7 is the ground pin, pin 8 and 11 are the open correctors, while pin 9 and 10 are the emitters of the internal BJTs. Pin 1 and 2 are the first air amplifier, and pin 16 and 15 are the other air amplifier. We'll be only using one air amplifier so the dead time is pin 4 is to be used for current sensing and limiting pin 3 is for the output feedback it's connected to the inverting terminal of the first air amplifier as shown here so pin 9 and 10 are grounded so pin, well, pin 8 and 11 they are pulled up to 16 volts which is also being used to power the PWM IC so the first section, the IC basically does it generate, uh, it powers a uh, gate drive transformer via this complementary bipolar junction transistors. So when pin the voltage at pin 11 is high, be, this bit 139 will conduct, and when it's low, the bit 140 is, will conduct. The same case for the other pin 8. So if you look at the connections and this H bridge made of these power MOSFETs, on the top side you have the P channel MOSFETs and on the bottom side you have the N channel enhancement MOSFETs. So basically it means that uh, it it means that these two also are complementary of each other and so like when the B one that nine conducts this MOSFET will conduct and since on the other side this will be low it means that the BD140 will also conduct and so with the ground here this MOSFET will be turned on but the P-channel MOSFET on the opposite top side will conduct if you look at it it means that you have the voltage flowing through this MOSFET here through this primary winding of the gate drive trans former through this series capacitor and to ground so when pin 8 and 11 they are low and high on the they complement each other current will flow the other, the other way around because the hexagonal this diagonal MOSFET will conduct but this will conduct so current will flow the other way around and so it means that the gate drive will be reset and current will flow through the opposite side so for the output driver you will have four independent wires for each MOSFET, four independent wires, each controlling each MOSFET. The connections are indicated by these dots here, as shown here. So the connection should be, should be made such that it will allow the diagonal MOSFETs to conduct at the same time when the other ones are off and prevent conduction, any conduction from any of the MOSFETs and its direct below and the MOSFET directly below it since it can cause shorting of the power rails which can burn out the MOSFETs. So when let's say this MOSFET and this MOSFET are turned on, it will mean that current will flow from the positive rail through this capacitor, through this series resonant resist e inductor I mean, and the, through the primary winding, through this MOSFET and to ground. So when the gate drive resets and current flows the other way around, these two will turn off 
and these two will conduct, meaning that current will flow do the other way around. So, and the transformer core will be reset on the primary side. So, the, for the secondary, you can have any turns you wish, depending on the output voltage that you want. So, for the input, you can have means input. So, for the initial power startup, you can use a uh, right bulb to ensure that even if there is a short, nothing will blow, the light will just light up. So, at first, the bulb should just turn on and then turn off when it operates well. So here you have your bridge rectifier. The ratings are shown 400 volts, 15 amperes. Here's the filter capacitor. And here is the bleeder resistor. It discharges these two capacitors when the power supply is disconnected. This is the decoupling capacitor. Basically it filters in a electromagnetic noise from the power supply and prevents it from freeing back to the mains. So the primary is also connected to this current sensing transformer. As shown here, it has a 1 to 37 ratio. So with that, it ensures that the, when 17 amperes is exceeded, the current sensing will be triggered on and the dead time will increase to limit the output current. So here you have a rectifier and a capacitor, filtering capacitor. So when the vo output voltage here exceeds 2.5 volts, as shown here, it's connected to this first operation amplifier. This operation amplifier will power up and this BJT will conduct. So it means that 45 volts will be available at, the, at this node here. And so if you look at it, the current limiting LED will be turned on and the normal operation LED will be turned off. So since you also have 5 volts here, which is being fed to the downtime time control pin form, the Dead time will be increased to limit the output current. And when the current goes below the maximum, so it means that the normal operation LED will turn on and the current limiting LED will turn off because the current limiting section will be disabled and the dead time will be reduced. The output voltage is controlled by this adjustable resistor here. And basically that's all about this multipurpose inverter circuit which you can use to power any, anything that you may be tinkering around with please drop a like below don't forget to like this video comment and subscribe to my channel for more amazing tutorials and projects